Good morning and happy Trinity Sunday. This is a day in our Western Christian liturgical calendar where we proclaim and embrace the mystery of a triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A time when we reflect on our thoughts about what that means to us and how can we share and glorify in it. The word glorify, it points to what scholars say is the process of getting closer to God, being more godlike, being more open, loving, and forgiving. Now, I know we here at St. Thomas continually practice those values as we strive to bring others to God and care for one another. Sadly, in the world around us, there are many people who are not close to God. But I believe that they would like to be closer to God, like Nicodemus. They have a lot of questions about connecting with our Lord. But they don't have a spiritual community to help answer those questions. The other day, I was driving upstate Pennsylvania on Route 81. I think it was 81, that road that goes up towards the Poconos. And it seemed like every few miles, there were these gigantic billboards, and they all had the same ad on them. There were ads talking about getting help with fentanyl. You know, that substance abuse issue? that drug, there had to be at least 10 billboards in just the short period in which I traveled. I thought to myself, there must be a pretty bad situation occurring in this community with drugs that would make them put up so many signs. An infestation of drugs in a community usually means that the people have lost all hope and need spiritual direction. I think they're trying to be born again, but utilizing the wrong type of spirit. We can see from our story about Nicodemus in our gospel lesson today that people are searching for something different. And they're confused about what some Christians say about being born again so that they can live a better, less tumultuous life, one which is less chaotic, has meaningful boundaries, and contains the joy of pure existence. And that's what we kind of long for on a weekend like this, when everything's calm and relaxed and we're not working at least some of us. We're not working and we're looking forward to relaxing. We just want a pure existence. One that is less chaotic. But we, as children of God, we can share what we know and how to achieve that pure existence. Jesus said, we must be born of water and spirit, meaning the forgiveness of baptism, the embrace of a life-giving community, and the rejuvenating, ever-sustaining, immortal descent of a Holy Spirit upon us. I'm talking about gifts from the triune God. God's Holy Spirit is a gift. What a beautiful gift. How shall we use it? It's something to think about, huh? It's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, we finally got here. The sun is finally cooperating with us. It was so nice outside the other day that I got out there and planted corn. Not the plants, the little seeds. I put them in the ground. 
and they're already starting to come up. I'm so excited about it. I'm thinking, if I can just get to that corn before the deer, I will have a nice summer. So I'm counting on doing that. It's a time for us to enjoy this warm weather with others. Get to the beach, go out on the wooded trails, backyard barbecues, or maybe just spend a little time at home in peace. Have a little bit of quiet. But it's also a wonderful time to embrace those holy gifts from God as we encounter so many people during this weekend in our travels. You know, I was remembering the other day of some of the vows in which we made in our baptismal covenant. You know, remember the one to proclaim the word and example, the good news of Christ? Remember that one? It sounds challenging, but, you know, if we think about it, it's really not that hard. In fact, it's quite simple. You know what I'm going to say. Show a little bit of love, be kind, polite, caring, and share access to a triune God. Could access to a triune God be that simple? Jesus thought so when he answered Nicodemus and told him to move away from that secular crowd and join a new community. Get away from all that stuff. Start hanging out with people who act like I act. Get baptized. Embrace God's spirit rather than all those other spirits out there which are competing for our souls. Sounds like good advice to me. It may even help someone avoid or overcome addiction. Johan Harry, in his popular TED Talk, which received over 11 million views, so somebody thinks he knows what he's talking about, he said that everything that we know about addiction is wrong. Whether it is addiction of drugs or power or money or sex, the way that we're looking at it and the way that we're treating it is wrong. He says that what people who are overcome or who succumb to any kind of addiction really need is, are you ready for this? Community. He said they need community. That's the very thing that God's Holy Spirit creates. Community. The kind of community that points to a triune God. One that is ever present. One whose spirit is real. Never changing and always accessible. Addiction of any kind is spirit-based. It's a spirit that lies and deceives, taking over the brain and fooling it into believing that it is God. It's a false God. It takes life rather than gives it. It's a community of ungodly spirits that keep us chasing for membership into a club which never quite lets us in. God's Holy Spirit is always with us, always inviting us in. We don't need money to access it. We don't have to chase it. In fact, Nicodemus, all we have to do is be near a community of believers to feel it. Somehow, just sticking around that community, we become born into that community. I think perhaps Johan might be on to something with his theory of what is really needed for those struggling with addiction, those who need clarification on how to be born again or to be born with Jesus, 
how to get closer to God. Perhaps it is community. Perhaps it is a loving community like us here at St. Thomas. A community of believers. I think it is. Because without fail, every person who has shared with me that they had an addiction of some, at some point said that what they needed most to change their life was a change in their community. To get away from the demons of their past. They need a community with a brighter light. Do you know any? Do you know any communities whose light shines so bright that just standing near them gives hope? I bet you do. Here's a question for you. How big is a community? Well, I wasn't quite sure, so I went to my favorite reference, Wikipedia. And what did Wikipedia say? It says in order to have a community, you need two to three people gathered for a common goal. You know, it's funny, but it kind of sounds familiar. I think I've heard that somewhere before. Something like, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Community! Matthew 18, 20 talks about community. So yes, Nicodemus, you can be born again, born by spirit and by light. Beloved, this Memorial Day, please remember those around us who do not have a spirit-filled community. And remember that we are but broken vessels called to leak the Spirit of God to all we encounter. So leak, beloved, leak. Leak the Spirit of God and create a brighter light in this world. One brighter than addiction can overcome. Amen. Amen.